Catherine. Okay, today we're going to um, work through the day seven, which is quadratic formula. And we're going to look at how we solve those problems which we haven't been able to factor in the past. So if we're looking at this equation here, if we tried to factor that, what would we do? what could we do? Oh, we would be looking for numbers that multiply to minus five and add to negative three. So no chance there, because five is prime, it's only got one and five, and there's no way we can combine those to get a negative three. Okay, but that doesn't actually mean it has no solutions, does it? Mm -hmm. So we have um, what's called the quadratic formula, and that allows us to find out the solution to our equation, our quadratic equation, even when it doesn't come out to a nice uh, fraction for ourselves. So this is the quadratic formula we see here. The students' favorite things are involved fractions and thirds. Perfect. Everything that we've been working towards. So if we're looking at setting this up, how will we set this one up for, to solve then? Well, we know that we're after x, so we want to have x equals and let's go for blue. And okay, what are the all these letters that we've got here? So you can see from the top ax squared plus bx plus c. It has to be in this order. So a in this equation is equal to 5. Okay, B. So I'm going to write that down here so I don't forget that. A equals 5. B equals negative 3. Negative 3. So it's important to remember that sign there, isn't it? And C is negative 1. So this works because we're already rearranged into standard form. So equal to 0. Now, negative B is negative negative 3, which becomes? That would be our positive. Excellent. Very common mistake for getting our signs, isn't it? And then yeah. plus or minus, because we're going to have mean? two answers. Okay. And so we have negative 3 all squared, which would give us 9. So negative and 3 times negative 3 signs. positive 9. And then we have minus 4. And I'm going to put these in brackets. Um, times 5, which is our a, times negative 1. Okay. And that's all over, oops, nice squiggly line there. We've got 2 times 5, which is 10. Great. Okay, a bit messy at the moment, isn't it? How can we tidy that up then? Well, x equals, you can, yep, so 3, that's as simple as that's going to get, plus, mm -hmm. minus. But underneath that square root, we can do order of operations, 9, and then minus 4 times 5 times minus 1 is plus. So plus 20. That's all over. Tidy that up. Last but not least, and I'm 20 just go plus to here, 9. So we have our x equals 3 plus or minus root of 29 over 10. OK, can we leave our answer like that? That's perfect. And 29 can be left as root 29 because there are no perfect square factors. OK. But uh, if it was something like, say, 18, we would need to simplify our thirds, yeah? Perfect. Okay, so let's go on to another question. Okay, so this one looks slightly different. How come? So in the last one, we had it equal to zero. And at the moment, so we've got two terms on one side and we've got one term on the other. So what would be a good thing to do first, do you think? All right, let's subtract two so that we get it into standard form. Why do we want it in standard form? Well, we know that 0 times anything is 0, so we want to make sure that we follow that. Um, well, actually, that's more null product property, isn't it? This is more about the general solution for the quadratic is found by it equal to 0. And there's some neat videos online. You can see the proof where this formula comes from. It involves a process called complete the square, which is a bit um, uh, more than we ask of you guys. But there, if some of you might be interested in seeing where it comes from. Okay, so if we're looking at applying, trying to find our solution to this, we've got x equals, and it was minus b, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So in this instance, our b is 5, so that's minus 5. And we've got plus or minus square root of b squared, so that would be our 25. And that's minus 4 times 2 times minus 2. 
and that's all over two times two, which would be my four. How are you remembering all those letters and where they go? And are, are the students going to need to remember all that? Absolutely not. That's what, um, if we look through our MYP um, formula booklet, I think we'll find that that quadratic formula is in there. So it's really about knowing how to apply it. So if we're tidying that up, we are going to work on this one. Plus or minus. I'm just going to keep it with a 25 at the moment. Okay. Minus, and then what do we have here? Plus 16. Plus 16. Okay, I need to. All over 4. So I think that will give us our square. Plus or minus. And that would be 41, is that right? Mm hmm. All over 4. Perfect. Okay. So actually, what are we finding when we've got that x value? What is that x value as far as our original is? So when you set it to zero. So when the value minus five plus root 41 over four would be substituted in place of the x in the equation, the equation would be true. Mm -hmm, exactly, so if we actually wanted to work through, we could put this back into our x values and it should all equal to zero. Excellent. So they should try number three and the now you tries. Perfect.